All right, good evening. This is Pam Batchelor from NCPPI on the digital teaching and learning team, um, the home base set aside, and I'm excited to welcome you tonight as we talk about creating standards aligned quizzes with outcomes in Canvas. Um, we have just a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, you're gonna definitely want a copy of tonight's slide deck. Uh, we have Lauren with us from the Canvas team and she has got some fantastic resources that you're going to want to have. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to pull up in a separate tab of your browser, um, the link to tonight's slide deck, which I've put in the chat. And you also see it on Lauren's screen right there. You wanna type that into your browser. Um, we are both live streaming tonight to our home-based Facebook channel, as well as with our um, participants here in WebEx. So we welcome everyone. Um, for those of you joining us with WebEx, we do have uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, if you are new to using WebEx, you do have to select an audio method. There is um, either audio through your device or audio through a uh, phone call-in number. If you have any problems with audio during the webinar, my recommendation is to click on the three dots in the WebEx panel. And on the WebEx panel, there is when you click on the three dots, it says switch audio at the top, and that will direct you on how you can use the call-in number. So if you have any audio issues during the webinar, I recommend that you switch the audio method. In WebEx, we do have both questions and chat. If you have a question for me or Lauren, please uh, use the Q&A feature. It'll help us keep track. Um, in the chat, you can chat with everyone who's participating. We do have about 100 folks registered for tonight. Um, I see a couple of you have already put some uh, introductions in the chat. That's wonderful. Please feel free to say hello and introduce yourself and where you're from. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren in just a minute. I have just a couple more slides of uh, not so fun stuff, but fun stuff that we need. Uh, so, and I skipped over introductions, so we'll go and do that next. So, as I said, I'm Pam Batchelor. I'm from your education consultant on the home base team within the Department of Digital Teaching and Learning at DPI. And you have my Twitter handle there at Pam Batchelor. Please feel free to connect with me and I'll let Lauren introduce herself. Thanks, Pam. Um, my name is Lauren Barris. I am a customer success manager at Instructor. I've been with the team for about three years now and um, have been helping uh, admins in schools, specifically in North Carolina for that entirety of my career here at Instructure. So I'm excited to be with you all today. I am based in Utah, so I'm two hours behind you. Um, but like I said, excited to be here and talk to you about outcomes. All right, so some of that not so fun stuff. Uh, we do have a live uh, WebEx and WebEx is keeping track of your participation tonight. Um, and so you can don't have to worry about a sign in. You will get point one CEU uh, and that will be emailed to you within five business days after um, this webinar. If you are on Facebook live, um, you will need to uh, leave a comment with your name and email address, and I'll try to get in touch with you to follow up. Um, we don't have really a, a system yet because we're still new with Facebook Live about live streaming. Um, but you're welcome to contact me and I will work something out. Um, you will receive credit for digital learning competency credit that is up to your local PSU um, for final approval of credit type. Uh, we do advocate that you include some type of reflection or evidence of that you're learning from tonight's Canvas uh, webinar and how it's going to change your teaching and learning. And again, do give me that five business days to get to you that email with your CEU certificate the to the recording for tonight's session, as well as a link to the slide deck. All right, and so uh, we do wanna share an update. So we have been doing our monthly webinars at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. And we've had some folks ask if we can have a more flexible format. So we are um, 
going to move forward to a mini Canvas course um, with a pre recorded webinar that was going to allow everyone to complete the webinar at their own pace whenever they have time. And it will still take less than an hour to complete. And we will be uh, moving to that format starting next month. So if you are signed up for one of the November or December webinars, uh, when those courses are available, you will get an email from me with a link to the course and you will have until the end of the school year to complete that course. All right, we're real excited. I'm excited to turn it over to Lauren and she's gonna have some excellent fun stuff uh, to talk to us about, but I love seeing those introductions in the chat. So please keep those rolling as well. And I will be answering questions in the Q and A um, while Lauren uh, gives us some great information. Thanks, Pam. So everyone, um, like I said, I'm excited to be here with you today. Um, the agenda for today's session is first, we will talk about um, outcomes and rubrics themselves and how you can um, import and create those in within your courses and also how you can um, attach a rubric to assignments. Then we'll, then we'll move on to talking about question banks and how you can align those to the outcomes in your course and use those with the Learning Mastery Gradebook. And then we'll also review our new quizzes platform and the outcome analysis report that comes with that. Uh, and then, of course, we will have question and answer at the end as well. So um, I am going to be uh, toggling back and forth between the, the slide deck and my Canvas sam sandbox. So I apologize. Um, I am going to leave pre presentation mode just so I can easily move between the two. Um, but a reminder, I know that Pam mentioned this at the beginning, but uh, this is being recorded. I know uh, it's kind of a lot of information in a relatively short amount of time. So uh, don't feel like you necessarily have to be following along within your own Canvas course, uh, because sometimes that back and forth can be hard to keep up with. You are going to receive that recording and you can uh, review this multiple times uh, as you need, pause, rewind, et cetera. Um, and then also I wanted to point out that we do have guides throughout this presentation that relate to the different things that we're talking about. Uh, so that that can also assist you when you're exploring this or playing around with it again on your own. So, as I said, um, we're first going to talk about outcomes. So, like I said, there are guides linked here. But some of you, uh, I'm here in a, an empty course, um, and some of you have maybe have already imported outcomes or discovered how you might do that. But in your course, you should see this page titled outcomes. So if you click on this, you can see I have a couple of outcomes already imported into my sandbox. Um, if you've never done this, then this is this little menu here is going to be empty for you. Um, but to actually locate the outcomes, you're actually just going to click find and you'll notice that this is a pretty common um, button that you're going that we'll be using throughout this presentation. So it's a, a similar process when you're aligning outcomes. So you'll select find. You should have outcomes stand or I'm sorry, account standards within your outcomes. When you click on that, a, a pop-up menu comes. And um, my institution is called Lauren Barris because that's the name of my sandbox, but yours is more likely going to be the name of your school district or uh, if, you, if you're teaching at a charter school, it's perhaps the name of your charter. Um, but you'll click on that and all outcomes that are available for your institution um, will be located here. So you can see I have outcomes for a number of areas, um, but I'll then move into North Carolina. And we do see that the North Carolina state standards are the ones that are most commonly used with teachers throughout the state. Um, so we, we get asked that question a lot of what's most frequently used. Um, and, and so it's the North Carolina state standards. So I'm going to keep moving forward, trying to find the outcome or clarifying object specifically that I want to import. Um, I'll continue going 
through. We'll do English. Uh, um, let's say I'm a, a writing teacher. And as we keep moving, you can see it, 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 it does seem kind of like a lot, you know, it's continually going down that rabbit hole. Know that if you mess up by clicking on the wrong folder or whatnot, this does slide left and right. So you can continue um, to go down. Additionally, I'm going to take this all the way to the very end uh, to show you how you can get to just a single clarifying object. But if you know that you want the entire ELA literacy folder, you don't have to go and import each outcome one by one. You could import the entire folder. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to get all the way to the very end of this. So we continue clicking through and you know you're at the end when you see this bullseye. This is what lets you know you have found that outcome. Um, and when we're looking at this, you see the the information of what this out, you know, what is expected from this outcome, as well as the point value system and the calculation method. Now, something I want to note about this is that those two things cannot be edited here in outcomes. You'll notice there's no edit button. Um, so you can't change the point value or the calculation method here. That being said, we have seen teachers um, you, you're able to add your own outcomes. And so teachers who, let, let's say that I wanted my point value system to actually be 321 rather than 530. I would just add my own outcome and copy this same thing, but change the point value. Or maybe I didn't want it to use the highest score. Um, I could change it that in, when I was creating an, an outcome as well. So once you found the outcome, you just click import. It make you know it asks, are you sure you want to do that? And now you can see I have it down here. Um, I mentioned you know you can create your own outcome. That you do that by clicking on add outcome here. I'm not actually going to show you how to do that today. Um, you can find information about that in the guides that are linked um, in the presentation. But I will show you one more time how to find that an outcome. Um, so again, this moves left to right. So you would go to your account standards, the name of your institution. Um, you'd select whatever folder you needed. Again, I'm going to do North Carolina because that's where we're working. Um, and I'm going to do one more. So we're going to go to older toddlers. I have an older toddler, so I could probably use this kind of information. Um, so I found my clarifying object. And I'm going to import it into my course. So this is uh, something else that I want to mention is you import it into your course. Um, but just because I've imported it into my outcomes demo course doesn't mean that it's going to be available that these same outcomes are going to be available in my intro to geology course. Now, that's usually, you know, because the courses require different outcomes. What, you know, in geology, perhaps there's different standards rather than um, what is going to be in English. So that's why they're not necessarily going to cross over, but that's something to keep in mind is that you do want to be importing them in each course if you're going to create quizzes or assignments that are aligned to an outcome. Um, that process is not necessarily complicated, but it is a little bit click heavy. So before I move on, um, were there any questions about that step? or those steps or the process of importing outcomes. Uh, no, uh, we just had a question um, from Delene about the purpose of outcomes. And I just kind of explained that outcome, another word for standards, right? And so we can add them uh, to rubrics and quizzes, um, and then we can get some reports uh, based on that information. Yes, thank you very much, Pam. Um, and that's a, uh, I'm really glad that you um, mentioned that it's like another word for standards because I, that's sometimes a disconnect in, in Canvas, we clearly call them outcomes, but a very, we often hear standards as well. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, so the next, as I mentioned, we were going to discuss rubrics and how you would create an outcome aligned rubric for an assignment. So. Uh, again, we do have those guides there for you. 
Um, to create a rubric, you also have a rubric page here within a Canvas course. So as I click into that, you'll see I don't have any rubrics for this course created yet, but if I did, you'd see them here. But to add them is um, very simple. You just select add rubric, and then by default, this information pops up. One of the great things about rubrics is you can use them in multiple courses and you can use them over and over again. Um, so that being said, I'd like to recommend that you are strategic and wise in how you title those rubrics, uh, just so that you, you know, when you're looking, if, if you have a list of 20 rubrics, you want to be able to tell by the title what each one is, is containing. Um, but for the purpose of this, I will just call it my English rubric. And again, we're talking about how to create standards that are aligned to outcomes. So since I have imported a number of outcomes into my course, yes, I could create a rubric using any numbers and descriptions that I want to, but I want this to specifically be aligned to an outcome. So you'll just click again, there's that magnifying glass with a find, uh, find outcome. You'll click on that and all of the outcomes that have been imported into your course will then be visible here in this menu. So I'm going to select this particular um, uh, outcome, and then I'm going to import it. And you can see now that it's attached to the rubric. If you don't want to add you know, your own information or anything, you're always welcome to delete that, that auto section. Um, if you click on the wrong outcome, you can always delete. And you can add additional outcomes. So I'm going to add two for this particular rubric, and then I'll create my rubric. And now you can see I have it here. And as I said, you're able to add multiple rubrics um, within a course, and you can use it in other courses as well. Um, next, I'm going to show you how you would attach a rubric to an assignment. Um, so I'm going to come here to my home page, which by default is is modules. And I'm going to start by creating a module. And we will just call this um, outcomes demo. And we'll add that module. I do want to note that modules is what is what we consider a best practice for course design. Um, the reason for that is because it allows for your Canvas course to be well organized. If you think of it, if you were in person teaching, a module would be like the binder for your class, and then each assignment could be a different tab within that binder or or different activities. Uh, like if you have a discussion, that might be one of the, the items within a tab. Um, so it's just a really great way to organize your course and help your students um, follow along in a very um, orderly fashion. So I've created my module. I'll now add my assignment. This is a drop down menu and assignment is the first one, but you can see there are a number of items here. But by default, it will be on assignment. And since I don't have any assignments created in this course, you don't see any listed here. And I'm creating a new assignment. So you click on that, you'll title it. Um, so I'll just call it ready to read. I'll add that item. And then I'm going to actually go into that assignment. And again, reminder here, we're adding that rubric that we created that is aligned to an outcome to a specific assignment. So you can see here, this is where I would add that rubric. So I'll click that. And you could technically create it and find the outcome directly from here. I personally think that it's easier to create them from the rubrics page. And then when you're trying to attach an outcomes aligned rubric, you still select add rubric, but you move over here to find those already created rubrics. And if you remember, I mentioned that if you create a rubric, you can use it in multiple courses. So you can see here, some of my courses have multiple rubrics. So my grade eight math has three rubrics. I could technically bring in written response with peer review um, if it related to this assignment. For this, I'm going to bring in the rubric that we just created. Um, but so you, you move to that, oh, I need to enlarge in that, and you'll use the rubric. 
and now it's assigned to my assignment. You will still need to edit your assignment. Um, here you'll, you know, you have the title, but you'll put in uh, some description about what the students need to do. Um, you'll need to make sure that you assign points to it, um, your submission type, the due dates, when it's available, who it's assigned to, all of those details. Um, and then I'm going to save and publish, but you could just save it. Um, then as a teacher, once you have the assignment created and as, as students submit work, when you come into SpeedGrader, you can actually view the rubric directly in there. Now, obviously this student hasn't actually submitted work, but if there was, uh, if it was an essay, um, my student, I would be able to view the essay here on the left. And then here on the right, I could see that rubric with those outcomes and use that to help me with the grading process. Um, and then I could put in the scores directly here. So we're going to say that this student did not so great in some of this. And then I would save it. And we'll move on to the next student. We're going to just give a couple of scores um, that you will notice later on in this presentation. And I'm going to do this for, like I said, just a couple of students. And uh, we're going to let Tiago really tank his assignment. Um, but that's a, a, a nice thing with speed grader is that you can see that rubric directly in here. Uh, I will I want to pause again and see if there are any questions up to this point about the process. And then so far, Lauren, you're doing great. Okay, perfect. I uh, sometimes I miss things in chat, so I always like to double check. And like I said, since it's a, kind of a lot of information, we want to make sure we don't lose anyone as we move along. So um, that is the the meat of how you import outcomes and also how you create rubrics that will that you can align to outcomes. Um, and as I showed you, I do like to have like demo how you attach a rubric to an assignment because of that speed grader functionality. It's, it's really helpful from the grading perspective. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is question banks. So with quizzes, it's really helpful when you're when you're evaluating your students with a with, well, either that's a large quiz or perhaps it's a large test. Um, it is helpful to be able to align them to outcomes uh, and we have two different quiz platforms in Canvas. One is called Classic Quizzes, and one is called New Quizzes. And I will show you today how to align outcomes in both platforms. Excuse me. Um, but first, we're going to start with Classic Quizzes. And the key with this is creating question banks and align, aligning those question banks to outcomes. Now, I'm going to kind of, first, I'm going to explain what has to be done, but then I will show you because it's a little bit of a cumbersome process. Um, what you do is you will create a question bank. You will then align the question bank to an outcome. You can then add questions to that question bank. And once you've done that, when you add questions to a question bank that is aligned to an outcome, all of those questions then are aligned to that outcome as well. So then once you've done that, you go in and you create your quiz. And as you pull in questions, that's how you would create a quiz that has questions that are aligned to a, an outcome bank, or I'm sorry, <laughs> an outcome. So like I said, that's a kind of a convoluted process to listen to. So I am going to show you what that looks like. So as I said, the first thing you're going to do is create that question bank. So you'll come to the quizzes page in your course. And then there's this little snowman menu that when you click on, you see the option to manage question banks. When I click on this, you'll see I don't have any question banks in this course because this is a new course. Um, but it's very easy. You just add the question bank here. You'll title it. And then you can see, you know, it's created. There's no questions. Um, but when I go into it, now that I'm in my question bank, you see the option here on the right to align it to an outcome. So you'll click on that. And again, you'll see all of the outcomes that have been imported into your course. 
So I, again, I'm going to select just a couple uh, for this quiz, but you can have as many as you would like be assigned to it, or I should say aligned to it. Um, now that I've aligned some outcomes, I'm going to actually add questions. So uh, some of you are probably fam familiar with the process of creating questions, um, but for, for those of you who aren't, I wanted to just let you know that this section up here uh, where you see question multiple choice, um, that is a, a, a section that only you as the teacher is going to see. And the reason is that this is going to, you know, when you're pulling in different questions, you're going to see the name of the question. So if it's for a, a particular unit, you might say, like, if you're a bi biology teacher, you might say anatomy of a cell unit one, um, or something to that effect that would help you know what this question relates to. For my purpose, I'm just going to call it um, compare and contrast. I'm going to make it an essay question, and I'm going to tell my students this is where you actually put in that question. So if it's a multiple choice, whatever. It, I mean, with it being an essay, it's mine is more of a prompt, but um, you would put in, you know, the actual question. So Um, so you create that, you update the question. I'm going to add another question so you can see it in here. Um, I'm just going to call it true, false. Show you an option here. Um, you'll indicate the correct answer. Um, and I think we'll do one more question just so you can kind of see. I'm going to do true false just because then I don't have to think of um, as many answers. Um, but we'll say and we'll I'm tempted to say true is the correct answer for that, but I will not. <laughs> so now that I've created, I've added questions to my question bank. Um, as I mentioned before, all three of these questions are aligned to these two outcomes because the out the um, question bank itself is aligned to the outcome. So once you've done this step, then you're ready to create the quiz. So again, I'm going to come back here to my home page where I have that module I've been working on. I'm going to add an item to the module. Select quiz. It's a new quiz. So we're going to call it English Facts. Add that item. Then I'm going to actually go into the quiz itself. You remember on the rubric when you're adding a rubric to an assignment, there was the option down here to add the rubric. To add the questions, you do actually need to go in and edit that quiz. So here I am in my quiz. I could put the instructions for the quiz here. Um, any other, you know, parameters that I want to put in place. Again, there's the who you assign it to, the due dates, et cetera. But here on the questions tab is where I'm going to add my questions. So I could add any question that I create, but if I want to add a question that I know is aligned to an outcome, then I'm going to click on this find questions button. So again, similar to like what you've seen in other pieces of this session. If we click on that. I will be able to see item banks from other courses. You can see I just have one other and it has zero questions. But if I had more question banks and they had questions in them, they would appear here. And then when you're looking at a bank, you can select all of the questions or just some of them. So we're just going to select two of these and add those questions. And now I've created a quiz that has questions that are aligned to specific outcomes. Um, I'm just going to save and publish this. Uh, you don't necessarily have to publish it, you know, the, until you're ready for students to work in it. But one of the great things about 
um, quizzes, the classic quizzes, and when there are questions aligned to outcomes, is you can use the Learning Mastery Gradebook to help you see sort of the, the status of how your students are doing. So I will show you in my own sandbox, but I do um, also want to show you a snapshot of a more robust <laughs> gradebook. So um, again, we have guides here for the Learning Mastery Gradebook. But with the Learning Mastery Gradebook, you as a teacher are able to see how your class overall is doing in particular areas. And um, you can also filter the gradebook. So you could hide certain students who don't have any results yet, outcomes that don't have results. You could filter it to only see who needs um, additional help with certain areas. Uh, but this is really helpful as you plan um, potential remediation needs or who may be ready to move on to uh, the next level. So, like I said, I will show you in my own sandbox how you locate this and how you might use it. So, the way you locate it is in your grades page. And I'm already on mine, um, so let me take it back to the original grade book. Um, if you don't, if you, Canvas is great in that it remembers where you were last using. Uh, or I should say what what version of the gradebook you were last using. Um, so if you've never used Learning Mastery Gradebook, then this is going to be you know where you're you're taken. But if you want to see that Learning Mastery Gradebook, you just come here and select Learning Mastery. Now, as you remember with that assignment before, I graded a couple of my students, and you can now see their results here in the Learning Mastery Gradebook. Um, I could export the report if I needed it for any reason like that. Um, or I can also hide students, like I said, who don't have results. I don't want to see the outcomes with no results. And now I have a much clearer view. Um, and if I only wanted to see um, those who had well below mastery, then I would deselect this. And I can see that Carly and Tiago are really struggling in this particular area. Um, and as you can see, there's some data overall um, for these outcomes. Uh, so this Learning Mastery Gradebook is really helpful. It gives you a very good overview of how your class is doing um, as a class entirely, but also you're able to see how students are doing. Now, before I move on to aligning outcomes to new quizzes, are there questions about the process to doing this with classic quizzes. So, I have a good question. Um, can quizzes or questions be copied to other courses, or do you have to create for each course? It's a very good question. They can be copied. Yes. So, um, let me come back to. I'm going to come to my. Um, this is a quiz. I was going to go to my quizzes page, but I can actually do it right here. If you click on this snowman here, you can copy to. And when I click on that, I can um, pick one of my courses. And I have access to a lot of courses because of the level of rights that I have in Canvas. But I could copy it to my eighth grade math course. And I could select if there's a specific module that I want it in. I could place it at the top or the bottom. Um, and then I would copy it. Um, so that is now started. It usually doesn't take very long to copy, although every time I try, they're very small quizzes. So uh, I think, you know, if you have a large quiz that you're copying, it could take a little bit longer, um, but that's how you would copy it to different quizzes. Um, and as you probably saw, there's also the option to send it to someone. You can send it to someone within your own institution. Um, and, and questions themselves can also be, can also be um, reused. So that's a great question. Um, were there others about that process? Okay, great. Well, like I said, there are two quiz platforms. Um, we just went over classic quizzes. We'll next talk about new quizzes. One point that I definitely want to make sure you understand is that classic quizzes feeds into the learning mastery gradebook, which we just looked at. New quizzes, however, does not yet do that. Um, 
there is a report in there that is very helpful and we are going to talk about that, but that's an important distinction to make. Um, so that, you know, if you are very, if you're a, a huge fan of the learning mastery gradebook and you use it heavily in your course, then um, classic quizzes is probably what you want to be using. Um, although there are some great features in new quizzes. So that's why we're going to show you how to align outcomes in new quizzes and what the report looks like as well. So with new quizzes, it is what we would call an LTI or an, ex, uh, an app. Um, so when you are creating it, uh, a new quiz, you know, here in the module, I'm, I'm adding it. Now, you would think that it would be a quiz because it, it's new quizzes. Um, but because it's an LTI, an external tool, um, you actually need to create it with an assignment, as an assignment. So I'm going to do that, select new assignment. I'm going to call it the new quiz, um, just to help us remember that, you know, when looking at the module, what this item is. Um, I then click into the new quiz, and then I'm going to edit it. Now, I remember it's titled new quiz, but it, you know, when you're in here, you see there's no option for questions or anything like that because it's an assignment. So, excuse me, um, you put in any information here. I'll again, set that point value. You're going to select it as an external tool for submission type. And then you'll need to find that external tool. So new quizzes is actually, the external tool is called quizzes two, which I think, yes, here's mine. Um, if you don't see quizzes two as an external tool option, then that means that your specific school or district has not enabled quizzes two uh, for you to use within the courses. Um, but if you're interested in it, uh, reach out to your Canvas admin and, and they can help answer any questions about how to make it available in your course. So I'll go ahead and select that as my external tool. Um, again, I'm just going to save and publish mine. But once you save it, again, you don't have to publish it right away. But when you save it, it launches uh, the, the external tool for new quizzes. So I'm here in new quizzes. We have the name of it. I can add instructions. You can look at other item banks outcomes here. But to actually add outcomes to a question, it's very simple. So you add a question. I'll do true false for now. And just like in what we saw in classic quizzes, this first part is going to be uh, that identifier for you as the teacher to know what the question is, is about. Um, the question stem is what the student is going to see. So I'm just going to call it true false and the question stem. Oh, man. Let's see. I'll have it say. Um, I just finished reading the book Dracula last night, so it is on my mind. Um, so you put in the, the correct answer here. Depending on the question type, you have different options that could be available. So you'd select those as appropriate. And then you would just align the outcome here. So no need to actually create a question bank first. You can just align outcomes one by one to questions. So all the outcomes that I have imported into my course are here. If you're looking at it and you can't quite remember what it is, you just click on it. You can see the information there. Um, but you can align, we're gonna align, we'll do three of them to this question. We'll com confirm. And there you can see are my three outcomes aligned to the question. So I'll do it with a couple more questions. Um, but as you can see, this process is much less cumbersome. Um, and so I'll put in a few more. So again, here we are aligning an outcome. Just do, oh, I always, always click on that instead of the check 
check mark. You do also have the option to select all of your outcomes. So there is that as well. Um, and then I'll show you one more question type just so you can see uh, those different that there are different options available. So we'll do an essay again. Um, So you can see there were different options available. So since this is an essay and I want them to do it in 300 words or less, I'm gonna actually set the word limit for them so they can't exceed it. And I'm also gonna show a word counter so they can see where they're at as they enter the text. Um, and then I'm going to select that outcome as well. Oh, I told you every time I always do that instead of the check box. Okay, so we'll confirm that alignment. Um, and now we have those those questions. Um, and you know, obviously you can't when you're looking at it, you can't just see, oh yeah, that's aligned to an outcome. But if you edit, you can see here that it's aligned. So as I mentioned, um, new quizzes does not feed into the learning mastery gradebook, uh, but there are some reports available. Um, so up here, you see the reports option and mine don't have any data in them because I um, it's a you know fresh course there's no content or anything but the the quiz item analysis is something that's going to show you details around what questions uh, students are skipping over or what answers are most frequently being selected things like that um, the outcomes analysis is going to actually show you uh, give you a snapshot of how your students are doing. So obviously, I don't have any data, but we do have uh, a screenshot here of what it would look like, and we have guides for for the this information as well with new quizzes. Um, but as you can see, we have on the left the list of students in the course, and then here along the top are the different outcomes that have been included within that specific quiz. So, as I mentioned, it's a good snapshot. You can see a snap, like I can see Bill is, has mastered these two out, um, standards, but he needs some help here with this one. Um, whereas Jane has mastered all three of them, so she's looking like she's in good shape. But Max has only mastered one, so he may need some remediation. Um, so, uh, it, it's helpful with that snapshot, but there are some pros and cons that you have to weigh in terms of uh, how you want to have that report, um, and also the the functionalities or question types available in the different quizzing platforms. Um, are there questions about how to add outcomes to new quizzes? Or I should say, actually, um, at all. I, I think we are good to open it up for question and answer right now. We'll give everyone just a minute, but so far we don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. And I do want to point out that the session's being recorded, so you will have that recording to go back over. Um, and then also uh, just if you do go into outcomes and you're not seeing um, the outcomes, for your um, standards when you click on the folder for your PSU, um, feel free to reach out to your Canvas admin. There is a process they have to do where they have to import the standards in for your um, instance. 